Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Rob Shiva, the spiritual philanthropist, and uh, it's been a long while since I recorded. Uh, I took some time off, wasn't feeling so well, so we're going to get into this. Uh, this is uh, Piers Morgan, and I'm not sure who uh, Bassem Youssef is, but from what I've seen so far, I saw very little of the interview, and it's spectacular. The guy has a mind that is very good and sharp, and he brings up some great points, and you know, Pierce really can't, um, you know, answer all the questions correctly, you know, or or uh, deny anything either. So let's take a look at this and see what, what goes on. I'm going to give you my perspective as well, the spiritual philanthropist, you know, perspective. So let's see. Let's take a look, guys. Let's see what's going on. Big warning. Well, joining me now to discuss the conflict in Israel and Gaza is a TV host and satirist, Bassam Youssef. Uh, Bassam, it's uh, great to have you back on the program. I wish it was under different circumstances. Um, first of all, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Oh, it was terrible, of course. I mean, we kind of get our news kind of also secondhand because, you know, my, my wife's family, they live in Gaza. They actually have uh, cousins and uncles there. Um, and uh, their house also was bombed. We haven't been able to communicate with them for the past three days. Communication are lost. So uh, we don't know actually what is the, uh, how is the, how are they doing? But you know, we're used to that. I mean, it's, it's just like it's, it's, it's very repetitive. We're used to that. We're used to them being bombed every time and moving from one place to the other. Uh, uh, you know, it's just like those Palestinians. They're very dramatic. Ah, Israel killing us. Uh, but they never die. I mean, they always come back. You know, they're, they're very <laughs> difficult to kill. Very difficult That's people funny. to kill. That's funny. I know because I'm married to one. Mm. I tried <laughs> many times. Couldn't kill her. He's got a sense of humor, I mean, obviously. There's a dark humor there, and I understand why. Because oh, it's not dark humor. I really, I try to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human. <laughs> I can never take her out. <laughs> Look at Ferris Morgan's face. I understand the, the humor, but I can be serious about some about this. Tonight, there okay, is... I will be serious. Now, I, I, I will be serious. I was watching your interview with Ben Shapiro, and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people who ever walked this earth. He's very, very smart. I follow him, and I believe everything he said. And when he came in on your show, his solution was, and I quote, his solution was that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of bitches as possible to make sure that this will never happen again. And anyone... Anyone who call for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. So God forbid, I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer. So I agree with Ben Shapiro. I think we should kill as many son of bitches as possible. Well, let me, so okay. far, He'd be funny me, again. See, no, no, so, so, so far, 3,500 people were killed, mm. including 5,000 son of bitches in the bombing of the Baptist mm. uh, uh, mm. hospital as we speak right now. Mm. One third of those 3,500 were children. So my question to Ben Shapiro is, how many more son of bitches do we need to kill so Ben Shapiro is happy? Okay, because it changes Basta, from let one me year. Just stop it you changes there, just from one. Just... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that. I, please, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm really at a disadvantage here. I'm looking at a camera. I don't see you. I can hear you on my. And the ears. reason I'm interrupting so is I think you might be. I think I think you're conflating different interviews with Ben Shapiro. He didn't use the phrase "sons of bitches" with me. Let me play. Wow, uh, I did see that interview and. Uh... I have to look it up myself. I remember uh, what it was is that on Pierce Morgan's uh, show, he had uh, this guy on there that they're talking about, Ben Shapiro. And uh, Ben Shapiro did say those things. It's not, uh, you can't refute that. That was actually, I mean, there's plenty of video of it. Matter of fact, he had to, on the show, had him explain himself, actually. So it's funny that uh, Pierce Morgan is trying to refute that right now. Interesting. To you, what he actually he said did. on my He did. He did. Go what? back. Go back to your interview. No, he, he, he didn't. Did. That was another interview. But let me play what he said to me here. Well, I, frankly, I don't believe in proportionate response to terrorism. I believe that the way that you stop terrorism is with wildly disproportionate response. That doesn't mean in terms of targeting civilians. It means in terms of killing as many terrorists as humanly possible and allowing them to dictate the terms of engagement by hiding behind civilians in areas that, that they are supposedly responsible for means that the only option for Israel is to surrender to Hamas's 
hatred of its own citizens, its willingness to use its own children as human shields. No, no country worth its salt could ever do that. Now, that is significant, substantively different to what you said he said, right? He's talking there but, but specifically I agree, I, but, but about I agree Hamas terrorists. With him. I, agree, I, I, I agree with him. The, the thing is, the question is, what is a proportionate response? Because yes. it has been different from one tier to another. So if you look to this graph, for example, this is the death of Israeli and Palestinians, and it's changing from one year to year. It's like fluctuating like crypto. So my question is today, what is the going rate today for human lives? I mean, 2014 was a great year for Ben Shapiro. 88 Israelis were died, and there was 2,329 Palestinians killed on the other side. That is one Israeli for 27 uh, Palestinian. That is a very good exchange rate. What I'm saying is, what is the exchange rate well, for I, today? Well, I, so I, you guys will be happy. That's my question. Well, it's not me. I, I it's not me, know. guys. I, I don't, I'm not on either no, side. No, 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 not you. Like when I yeah. say you guys, I you know what I like about this guy, uh, Bassem Youssef, is that he uses. I mean, it's a dire situation in Palestine, and it's been that way since. Um, about 70 something years now i'm not sure exactly how many uh, over 70 years and it is an occupation first of all and for him to be able to use humor you know i kind of i i, I kind of like that I, the fact that he can use humor and you can tell there's a lot of feeling and angst and just a lot of disappointment and a lot of things inside of him you can see it uh it's a horrible situation, first of all, but for him, uh, for uh, Bassem Youssef to be able to have a sense of humor about it, it's dark humor, which I love, uh, and, and to emphasize the point uh, in such a way it makes a big difference. So let me just show you guys real fast. I am uh, the author of this book here, which has been banned quite a bit. They, they don't even put it in the search, but it's... Uh, American Deity, Dark Theory, Inc. is the name of the company. Truth is stranger than fiction. It's all about dark humor. Um, stuff like like what he's talking about. I mean, I, I did a, a thing on the shooter uh, in Las Vegas. So the guy in the turban in the background, he's being stopped by security. And the other guy that, you know, has the rebel flag and everything from, from uh, the south of, uh, you know, uh, North America uh this is an old confederate flag and he's carrying an actual uh, uh weapon and a briefcase and a backpack and the guy's like can i take your luggage you know this is, that happened in mandalay bay so that's just some of the stuff that i do guys you know uh i i love dark humor because i think humor is a way of being able to allow us to exchange ideas without stepping on toes and causing uh you know any bad sentiments but in today's world you really can't even use humor because uh there's a lot of people that will be offended by the humor itself and i did stand-up comedy for quite quite a while i was the first south asian american stand-up comedian and uh i love the fact that i could use uh you know, humor, even though I may not necessarily believe certain things, I express the, uh, you know, parts of, of society that have different opinions. And uh, like this one's one of my favorites here, and it might ruffle a few feathers. But if you see this one here, it's basically saying make America great again, one ethnicity at a time, if you can see it correctly here. And it says Trump, this is a woman that's a white woman. She's has all this, uh, um, insignias, uh, symbols, and the colors of the feminist movement, but she's holding a sign that says, Trump, grab him by the, you know what, <laughs> and everybody around her is like, what? So, you know, I've gotten in trouble for stuff like that, uh, like this here, uh, when you go, he's going to see a psychologist, and he's like, yeah, I think Trump's a racist, but all, you know, when you say that, you get lots of labels put on you like militant bipolar depression psychopath delusional threat if you look closer here you'll see psychotherapy is crazy and dangerous you know these they automatically get labeled that's the society that we live in you know you can't have an opinion without them you know the powers that be labeling you you know in the media it's it's a it's a very sad situation that we live in guys you know we're, we're supposed to be the most uh contemporary modern free country in the world that has the uh best so so-called best way of living and that's why all these people are coming from other countries here 
to to live the American dream, which is to have you know tons of white chicks and a lot of money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it used to be that it's changed now. I think it's changed to Asian chicks now. Well, I'm just joking around, guys. But uh, you know, this this is just uh, some of the stuff that 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 I put here's. Here's a funny one that I did, which hopefully Islam won't destroy and kill me for it. But I thought when they had the uh, thing with, uh, what's it called, uh, Charlie Hebdo or something like that. Uh, this one is about a cartoon characters that were being uh, taken as hostages and they were going to be executed uh, by the terrorists. And <laughs> the, the, if you look at the, what, what the cartoons are saying, it's like, wow, Really? You know, you're really going to kill us, but, you know, we're, we're just cartoons. I don't get it. <laughs> you know, but I, I use that as just a way of, like, kind of showing how angry people get. It's like, when you get to the point where a cartoon makes you want to kill someone, you know, then there's a problem there. Also, you know, I mean, there's, 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 there's many other... Here's one that fits in to why other reasons why people want to kill here in America. You know, this is this I thought was really funny. If you're not an American, you're an illegal alien. Get off my property. And you look at the alien saying, but we're not even from this planet. So, you know, I do a lot of stuff like that. A lot of my stuff is cult-like because I have a following, but they're very strict, small following, which I don't mind. Uh, I, I, I did it because I just wanted to express my views and opinions. And I wanted to, uh, you know, just kind of have fun with this stuff. And I think that's why I respect um, Basim Yusuf, that he's uh, he's using this, you know, uh, you know, th this, the way of humor, like what he's talking about, what he just spoke about. I actually had something very similar, but I did it like this. It's uh, this I did a while ago. And you can see during the time of the Harvey Weinstein thing, you can see I put like, well, what's in the American justice system and then the Dow Jones, I compared it to the stocks. So if you look here, you can see uh, that's Kim Jong-un, which is war, sell, rape, sell, terror, sell, securities fraud, sell. But at the moment in time, Harvey Weinstein was in, in the media the most. And it's all sexual harassment and buy, you know? So this is the type of stock that, that you know, in the media, in, in other words, the media plays these type of, uh, these type of things in the media. So that's why I do these, uh, do these cartoons. I'm coming out with the second part to this book. Uh, if you guys haven't already uh, purchased this book, it's on Amazon. Uh, you can check it there, but you'll see that, uh, it's called The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. That is a Mark Twain quote. Um, I love Mark Twain because he's a practical guy. Um, and uh, he really made a lot of sense, you know, and I can respect him, really respect him for that. Uh, so, guys, if you're interested in seeing some more of my humor, go ahead and uh, check it out. The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. And you'll see this cover here just so you see it. All right, and it'll be by Rav Shiva, TSP, the spiritual philanthropist. That's TSP Rav Shiva. And here's the second one's coming out, American Deity. Some of us are souls, but some of us are ass souls. So I have a part two coming out, guys, a part, a part two for this. So be on the lookout for that as well. But let's get back to this. I just wanted to throw that in there to show that this is why I can relate with this guy is because of our ability to use humor yeah, in such a way to express ideas. So that's why I showed you that. Okay, so let's take a look what he says now. 